If there's anyone here who has um, ever been um, uh, intimidated by a piece of art or confused about how to interpret a piece of art or lack confidence that your interpretation is the correct interpretation or been a little insecure about whether you've known how to look at a piece of art, show of hands if that experience has ever happened to anyone. Okay, good, good. I think that's what tonight is about, but I'd also like to talk a little bit about a way of looking at art that has made art, it's a filter that I use that helps me experience art. So most of you probably know two hemispheres up here in our brain, and this one is the one that creates and experiences and flows, and this one is the one that evaluates, analyzes, judges. And when this one enters the picture, when you're looking at a piece of art, things can happen that prevent us from experiencing it fully. Has anybody here had an experience of hearing the evaluating brain while you're looking at a piece of art? And if so, what are some of the things that your evaluating brain have told you while you're looking at a piece of art? Any, anybody? This is art. Yeah, this is art? You call this art? Anything else? I don't really understand it. Yeah, I don't get this. This must make sense to somebody, but not me. Anybody else with the brain talking to them while, while you're looking at a piece of art? This moves me. This moves me. So this brain gets in the way, and it starts evaluating, starts cleaving everything to good and bad, and we have a less immediate experience I would say it's not just the brain, it's, let's see, it's this brain, I have a prop. It's the judge, art judge, art judge comes out. <clears throat> so you're looking at it and art judge says, <laughs> <clears throat> so tonight I was going to experiment with uh, looking at a piece of art and firing the judge, putting the judge to the side for a moment, and just it's just an experiment. I don't really know what will happen with this. I was trying to think, when was the last time that I looked at a piece of art and was truly moved by it? And the one that stood out more than anything was a piece of art that I saw when I was probably four years old. And I saw it in Life magazine, and it was giant, and it was blown up huge. And you probably know the piece by Picasso, Guernica. And I didn't know anything about art. I didn't really know. It was just another thing in the magazine. And I remember just experiencing it very purely and directly. I remember seeing the horse's face contorted, and I remember seeing the arms splayed out, and I remember seeing the teeth, and I didn't know anything about the war or the people or I just knew that when I looked at this piece, something happened. And I, exactly, it hit, it hit me down here. It didn't come in through here, it came in through here. So I thought, let's see if we can be aware of the judge and return back to that time where you look at something very purely. Forget the fact that we're in an expensive museum and that all these pieces are significant by someone's estimation. And let's just see if we can look at a piece. Use your brain to just pay attention to what you're feeling. When you See if you notice when the judge comes in. When the judge says, wow, that's expensive, or whatever it is. You don't have to get mad at yourself. Just be aware of it. And see if you can click back into just paying attention to what's happening between this piece of art and you. The reason that I wanted to start with this piece is because, first, it's just exciting to the eye. There's so much going on with it that it's, it's hard to not look at it. And also the scale of it. I know that somebody said the reason that nature opens us up to mystical experiences is because there's such a, yeah, this giant, giantness to the landscape and it makes us feel our puniness. And so sometimes I think art pieces that are expansive are easy to lose ourselves in. 
The other night I saw a documentary on film in 1939, and they talked about Louis B. Mayer. And they said that Louis B. Mayer's genius was that he understood his own taste so well that it enabled him to understand the taste of other people. And so I have a piece up there that meant something to me, and I would like to see if this group of people might be able to detect it on your own. And the tool that I'd like you to use in detecting it is to try to go to the experiencing feeling part of your brain and see what speaks to you. So what I'd like to do is we'll go upstairs, fire your judge, I'll unscrew this now so there's no risk of uh, making anybody think about judges. Oh, sorry about that. Um, and just wander the hallway and see what speaks to you. And I'm going to gradually make my way from the beginning of the hallway all the way to the end. And when I get to the end, at that point, I'd like you to be standing in front of the piece that speaks most loudly to you. Okay, five. Does anybody have more than five at one piece? One, two, three, four, five, six. Are you with this piece? You're with here. Are you? Where are you guys? Okay. So five and five. So we've got these two pieces. Well, I think that's a quorum. So since ten people were drawn to this, I thought that maybe we could just spend a few moments with it. We don't have to spend too, too much time, but people were pulled toward, towards it, and I'd like to share that experience together. So I'm gonna recommend, let's look at that, and then we'll see how that goes, and then I'll tell you if, this, if one of these is one of the pieces that I picked. I won't tell you that yet. Somebody said, I saw it and just felt sadness. When, you, when you're experiencing this piece, do you notice, I'd love to hear if anybody is feeling anything particular, not thinking anything particular, but feeling anything particular on this. All three of the comments that I've heard resonate with me. The first person who said sadness, and the next person said uh, this, there's a, 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 something negative that's coming off of it. Um, I find there's something interesting that there's a painting and there's the artist, and then I bring my own life experiences to it, and whatever's happening, I put them against my own life experience. And so for me, it's interesting that that's so perfect. It's like that's a life that I would have loved to have as a kid. The perfect house, and the, wow, they can afford to have themselves painted. They must, be, they must have everything they want. Yet there's a sadness about it to me. I feel, a real, I feel a real sadness. I actually picked a couple of pieces. They're the last two pieces on the, on the far right. I'll let you guys look at those if you'd like. I'll tell you that what I, the, the reason they spoke to me, I'm not really sure why they spoke to me. I started off professionally as a graphic designer, so I tend to look at things as shapes and design. They both have strong design elements. But what I thought was interesting, those are both pieces that came out of the WPA. And I always think there's something interesting about the artists that were hired by the Works Progress Administration, that they kind of slipped in their own agenda. You know, they were, they were there to do this great American, kind of create this great artwork, but I got the sense that there was subtle things playing underneath the surface. It's one of the reasons why I like that, too. I also, that image of it being a mirage and what's really going on, I, I, I always seem to see those things. And so down there, they have one person is really uh, kind of sublimating this idea of industry in America and how beautiful it is, even through this blacked out sky. And the other person is doing a street scene in Harlem, and I've, they're both two portraits of America during the 30s. And I found that there's something interesting that happens in a museum where two pieces, each piece 
can influence each other, and I like that thought. I was looking at one and the other, and then I realized, no, both of them together are kind of the note that gets created between them is what I'm interested in. And I find art that portrays something that our brains tell us are wretched in a loving way uh, to really expand me. And so I felt that that piece down on the left, there were a lot of kind of unsavory characters, but my sense was that the person who painted that portrait loved them all. And that's, what, that's the reason that I like those two paintings, kind of the subtext of the one, and then this portrait of the other, and how they fit together. <laughs>